Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the World Cup final preview. It's almost upon us, a long anticipated final, a final of two superstars meeting, but it is much more than that. Of course, you saw the thumbnail, there was a Messi, there was Mbappe, and in many ways, uh, all storylines revolve around these two guys. I think more about Messi than about Mbappe at the moment, but... My jersey choice gives it away. We gotta talk about the third place uh, match first before we dive directly into the final. I already recorded a short um, a video on it, you know, uh, for the shorts uh, channel. And yeah, um, Croatia won it 2 1. It was, especially in the first half, a rather entertaining game with goals coming early. Uh, especially Morocco looking completely unsorted at the being Bunu almost scoring a really weird on goal. It was like a golf putt <laughs> while he did. The go ahead goal came from a free kick um, combination that was really well executed. A uh, free kick came, came in. Uh, Perisic has it to Guardiol, who then has it in. Uh, it, it was a thing of beauty, in a way. And at that moment, you thought that Croatia is going to run away with it, but uh, uh, far from it, because um, Morocco then earned a free kick. Uh, it comes in. Uh, it is deflected by Lovromaya and uh, falls to Darian. You can see how Livakovic, he more ma he's making a step back and kind of get himself well adjusted. And then comes too late and Dari heads it in and it's 1-1 one, one in the ninth minute. Really crazy opening scene. However, then it kind of was more falling Morocco's way who really went in, had a few more chances. I mean, Enesiri twice could have put himself in a better uh, position. There was a nice attack where Ziyech and Hakimi were nicely com com combining. Then Hakimi could have, should have played the pass maybe a little bit um, more to his Enesiri, but I think that it was the position of Enesiri that was off because uh, there was not much more room for... Um, Hakimi to play the ball. Then another one relatively late, late on where uh, and NSC probably could have got the head, head on it. And again, for Morocco, I think the theme at this World Cup is converting their chances because they should have won against Portugal 2 or 3 nil, to be honest, if they converted their chances. And also against France, they would have deserved another goal, but finishing was a big problem for uh, Morocco. And so it is Orsic where. Uh, Croatia has a nice a a attack and no one takes a shot. They all pass here, pass there, try, try, final. Then you thought this is uh, over. Kovacic presses on. The ball comes to Livaya, who plays it out to Orsic, who beautifully, I mean, with the inside of his foot, curls it against the post in uh, Bunu, having absolutely no chance converting that one. Second half was a little bit more scrappy. I thought that the Croatia overall had more, should have gotten a clear pen penalty, but it was Morocco. They were really not happy with the referee, and I honestly didn't quite get it because the few times that they uh, wanted to have a penalty, every replay shot there was nothing, and the referee actually got it right more more most of the time. There was even, I think, already in the fourth first half, they were claiming there should, there should be a corner. If you see the replay, he actually got it right, weirdly enough. So was a little bit of down and then uh, constantly uh, going on 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 the ref. I didn't like that. And the series has a big chance to equalize in stoppage time. It doesn't happen. And then again on the ref, on, on, on the ref. And I even left the field uh, instead of paying tribute to Croatia. I mean, I'm not sure if we need it that, but it's kind of left a little bit of sour taste from, for Morocco. Uh, but again, both of these teams have achieved way more than one could have ever imagined. It has to be absolutely said. Uh, this is where Morocco were the sensation of the tournament. And like in 2002, I said, we will have a 2002-like tournament. Not quite, but it was a little bit with Morocco making to the semi-final. It was just, didn't just happen. And then in the end, Croatia... I think were probably overall, although they didn't win the group that they were in, over Croatia probably was a little bit more solid team, but you know. Third place done, Croatia wins it, and it actually allows me to wear a neutral jersey in the final. You see uh, on the back, it's all about the World Cup final. Put up eight jerseys. I have two in petto for tomorrow's review. Should Argentina 
win it, I will wear this 2008 jersey that Messi won the Olympics in. Should uh, France win it, I will wear this uh, jersey. So it is France against Argentina. Two big powers uh, of the game. The game will, of course, take place in the Lusail Iconic Stadium. Marciniak, uh, Polish referee. Uh, I only, I think he's a really good referee. The only time that I saw him live was when he played Lask against Club Club Rouge, where he gave a penalty that I'm still not sure was was, was a penalty and VAR didn't, didn't work. So it was kind of so. Since then, I have have, have a little bit in for him, but I think he's an excellent re re referee. And for Poland, you know, this is a league that doesn't get a lot of love. To produce a ref, referee can referee a World Cup final that is really, really, really remarkable. But before we uh, let's uh, let's talk about the two teams. As I said, two two times world champions. Uh, for me, it is who will become the first three time champion. And it's actually remarkable how many finals we had where uh, two time world champions played against the, each other. We had one in 1970 with Brazil and Italy, both at that time uh, two-time world champions, Brazil winning that one. Then uh, we had one in 1990 between Argentina and Germany. And now we have again one between Argentina and France. So kind of interesting how it goes uh, this way. I don't think we had this for any other title so far, uh, where they were level. Maybe, no, I don't think we had that. So I've, I find this really, if you want to get the third star, you need to beat a two-time world champion. And that's actually fair, like that. I also have to say that I was actually happy that those two are playing against her, especially if Messi was to win this World Cup, then France at least would be a proper opposition that you beat a big guy. I said it already in um, in uh, the review of the semifinal. I think this is a very, very important uh, thing that, you know, it's not that, you know, if they would have beaten Morocco and then you look at who Argentina played, uh, yeah, that, that does, doesn't sound so great. But again, we have two Tutans world champions vying for the third title. Um, we also have uh, multiple winners of the European Championship. I think we have uh, 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 the Continental Championship. I think Argentina won 15 times the Copa America. Of course, the Copa America is a much older tournament than the Euros. Uh, there are also less teams uh, involved, so maybe the 15 is a, is, is a, a little bit inflated number, but France is also a two-time European champion. Um, so yeah, the one thing, and this, this will be a theme throughout, that Argentina is kind of a long-standing power. They were part of the first World Cup final already. Um, and they had two titles way before France had even the first one. That France is an absolute world power. They were always a great nation, but that there's an absolute world power. Um, maybe it was hinted at in the 80s, but it really only came along uh, in the build-up to the 98 World Cup. And ever since, France is a mainstay on the top of uh, the... Um, of the pile in, in, in a way it is very often considered among the very very best nations um let's look at the head-to-head -head, which actually argentina leads with uh six wins three wins for france and three draws uh you see them here i have always uh the dates there were many games in the 70s which i found uh, really interesting there was also Early on, a lot of games, uh, if they weren't playing on neutral ground, that were played in Buenos Aires and most of them in the Bombonera before the World Cup meeting in 78. Uh, whereas uh, the French home games, they all came relatively late, like in the build-up to the 86 World Cup and then uh, rather more recently. But uh, overall, Argentina is leading that one quite comfortably and more importantly, they're leading also only if we look at competitive games, which are, of course, three World Cup games, where uh, Argentina won the two that were played in South America at the 1930 World Cup on the way to, uh, route to, to, to the final, and at the home World Cup in 78, where they also beat a uh, then very young and exciting French team that was not quite there yet. The last meeting between those two was this excellent, excellent round of 16 match at the 2018 World Cup in Kazan in Russia. Uh, where, you know, this was the game where uh, Kylian Mbappé 
announced himself on the world stage and also in a way we also thought that this is the last time that Messi will have a chance to win it so kind of interesting as well also find it interesting that while uh, Argentina leads relatively clearly in the overall uh, when I look at goal scores only 15 to 11 but you know doesn't really say much uh, when it comes to experience in World Cup finals uh, there have been a total of uh, eight World Cup finals featuring either one of these teams being played. The very first one, and you see are already the story that uh, before France ever made it to a World Cup final, Argentina had already played four. So Argentina is a much older power in in in, in, in a way. Um, of course, playing three times against Germany, losing twice, but winning, of course, the first one uh, in Mexico City, uh, thanks to Maradona. Uh, they, of course, won the first World Cup at home, but that's one that's a little bit tainted because seemingly the Junta uh, had a helping hand in there. They won that one in overtime and they lost the very first World Cup final despite having a 2-1 halftime lead. Um, the two losses to Germany, I think the first one was a well-deserved one because they didn't play they just kicked everything that was moving and then uh yes if you don't convert your chances germany will hit you and so that's that france won on home soil like the first title like argentina on home soil against brazil also a file that's a little bit tainted by all the stuff that was happening around ronaldo that seemingly clearly unsettled the um, uh, brazilian team so there's always some uh, you know it's not that uh, like what happened in 78 in Argentina, uh, but there's a little bit always, you know, Brazil didn't play in full strength in a way. Who knows? They lost uh, in rather dramatic circumstances the final in 2006, which was the, uh, the Zidane's last game, of course, the headbutt final, and then they won the last one against um, the Luzhnik, in the Luzhniki Stadium against Croatia 4-2, so they're defending uh, champ champions. Um, just one thing, we already know that the key choices is Ar Argentina all white, uh, France in all navy. Uh, seemingly Argentina went for all white because they won the Copa America in all white. I heard a rumor. Let's see, as I said, France won in all navy against Croatia in that one. Uh, but for the kit kit jerseys, I mean, while Argentina lost two finals against Germany wearing their away jersey and they won their two titles in their home shirt. In the Centenario in 1930, they were wearing also a home shirt. It was the weirdest jersey matchup ever because uh, it was Uruguay the home colors and Argentina home colors, but with kind of a brownie pants. Whereas France won both played in the home jersey and when they were wearing the away jersey, they lost. It does not matter what you wear. I just want to point out, if you want to be superstitious, then look also what your position is wearing. Um, Argentina has also a little bit more clout when it comes to individual honors. They had three times the Golden Ball winner. Uh, the one in 78 is a kind of an inefficient one because the Golden Ball was not yet officially awarded by FIFA, but Mario Campos is largely, largely considered the best player of that tournament. Of course, in 86, Maradona. In 2014, Messi, I think, was a little bit of an odd choice, to be honest. But I guess um, they gave it because he was the big name star. I would be surprised if anyone but Messi gets this title even though I currently feel uh, that title probably should go to Griezmann if you were to ask me. Uh, whereas in 2006 Zidane got it as the best player of that tournament uh, probably all right although I thought you know in, 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 in 98 while, while I was watching Zidane won it why is Ronaldo get, getting the title but I think uh, in hindsight this was, was probably right. Also Argentina twice had the highest goal scorer at uh, 1930. It comes up Stabile, uh, first uh, top scorer at the World Cup. And then, of course, Mario Campos in 78. Just from then, this was the record-breaking campaign. One World Cup, 13 goals. So, kind of gives you a little bit the cloud. Now, let's talk about how they went to the final. Here is a review of all their six matches that they had so far. And uh, I used the betting odds and my model to kind of judge the quality of that result. So when we look at Argentina, they lost the first one to so also so the everybody is a zero percent is a loss. Uh, whereas the wins against Mexico, Poland, and Australia give them almost uh, are high rated, but you know uh, they just about beat the point spread there. Whereas the Netherlands game. Um, was a draw where our Archie Ar Ar was slight favorites. The one where they really exceeded explanation was the 3-0 against Croatia. 
Overall, at the moment, the form rating for Arch Argentina based on these games and three uh, pre-tournament uh, friendlies is around a 70% record overall. Uh, and, of course, more recent results are more heavily weighted. Uh, whereas uh, for France, it started actually good. The 1-0% is actually one that I counted less because they played with a B-squad there because in the game this didn't matter anymore that lost to Tunisia. So France, when it counted, actually... Going a little bit against the expectation, I mean, the win against England really weighs heavy because that was, was what was a win that showed the resilience of this French squad. I also think that the uh, game against Morocco really showed how good that French squad is. So France going into this tournament with a slightly better form, although pre-tournament they were worse off. Both teams have scored uh, to, uh, a lot of goals, 12 for Argentina, 13 for France, both conceded 5. Also... Both teams have in both teams we find the top four goal scorers. We have at the moment leading Messi with five and three assists ahead of Mbappé, also with five but only with two assists. And then Julian Alvarez and Olivier Giroud with four each. I think this is a long time that, that we had all the offensive power meeting in the final. So I find this also very interesting. How do I see this game? I think there are goals in that one. This has the potential of being finally a great final again. I was thinking, one, when was the last really, really great final? And I would argue that last uh, 2018 had many goals, but it was not competitive. So it's not, 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 not a great final. I think mm, the, either the 10 and 14 doesn't count. The 2006 final was good for 60 minutes until Italy got tired. Uh, the 2002 final, I think that was the last rather... Competitive one and good, but then as soon as Brazil scored the two goals, it was also. So I think the last really, really, really great final was the 3 2 between Argentina and Germany in 86. And I think this final could deliver us that, that, that as well. We have a few worries with a bug hitting the French squad. So that will be interesting to see. But overall, I think there will be goals in that one. I think France have been proven to be the slightly more uh, cohesive team, whereas Argentina are 10 men and then Messi adding a little bit of sparkle up top. But now Messi can play off Julian Alvarez, so this is also interesting uh, to see. I think if the French contain Messi um, and get their squad fully playing, I think France could easily win this one. I think. To me personally, when I look, look at it from all, when I've seen in the tournament, I think France are the better team. However, Messi is on a mission. And that makes this game so intriguing and also these other injury troubles. And also that France is basically has so many injuries. I mean, of the first team squad, many are not even in the squad. That is rather remarkable about what they're doing. So... Again, it will come down. Will Messi finally win the big one or will France do the impossible and win two World Cup Cups in a row and make Deschamps one of the most successful international managers of all time? France repeated World Cup. This is a really, really big story. Um, I don't... Of course, Argentina winning it for the third time will also, also, also be, be, be a big one. Argentina will have the crowd support because not only the neutrals, but there are also many Argentinian fans there. Uh, in addition, I think that this World Cup title, and I know this sounds stupid, uh, sounds crazy, but I think it means more to Argentina as a country than it does for France. However, uh, the historical implications are definitely more on the French side, and France, you know, is a European nation, and European nations are doing usually well. The last time a uh, non European one was in 2002. It's an interesting one. My model has Argentina's slight favorite, 56%. When I look at bookies odds, uh, it's even tighter, just, just the slightest edge sometimes for Argentina. It will be a big one. It's played tomorrow, 4 o'clock Central Euro, Europe time. I'm really lo lo looking forward to that one. Um, let's see who will win. Made a better team win. I have already said maybe my sympathies at this moment are a little bit more for France because there are two Milan players in there. But I wouldn't mind seeing Messi lift the title either. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. How do you think this final will go? Do you think it will be a good game? Subscribe to my channel if you want to see a review for the final and more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.